This is the Jacqueline Martian podcast, and I hate intros, so here we go. Go! To be some things, things that you'll come to learn about me in the next few days. I, I am never going to financially recover from this. Point I'm too afraid to ask. When they say 2% milk, I don't know what the other 98% is. Today I'm talking about things that I learned at Oregon State. Some of these are like life things. Some of these are just like easy how to like not be silly and like easy mistakes. And just like cool things that you should know about. Um, these are things I just made off the top of my head real quick. I'm about to finish here. I have my final list of things I need to do in order to graduate. And there's too many discussion boards to even discuss. Um, but I am slowly making my way towards getting done with school forever. But so first thing that I learned from coming to Oregon State, don't worry so much about what dorm you're going to live in. Um, I had this vision that I wanted to really live in Weatherford Hall and I thought that would be the most social dorm. It was the coolest looking dorm. I wanted to be an alum someday and look back and be like, that's my room. Like, look, that's such a cool building. And I really did not like living in the dorms at all. Um, needed to have some lower expectations. Didn't want to like set myself up like this is the best thing that's going to happen. The dorms are the best because you have the best people there. Um, I love my roommate. I'm still really good friends with my roommate. But the issue is the people on my floor. I think there were like three dudes on my entire floor. The rest were girls. And they was just like everyone like had their own way. And this was like it was just really weird. I did not like living in the dorms too much on campus. I feel like I never had any like actual space. Like the dorms are so tiny, you're living in bunk beds and you have to eat and live in the same place. So it just wasn't good for me. I just need more space to like physically move around. And yeah, you can go on campus and stuff, but like you don't have any like homey spot. So don't worry about the dorm you're gonna live in. The most important thing is like having good people, making good relationships. Um, some people have great times in the dorms. I did not. Oh well. Um, don't take classes just because your professor says so. Especially those first couple uh, terms, like my, I remember my advisor was like, you should take golf because a lot of business transactions happens on the golf course. You know, I don't like golf. I like smacking a ball, sure. I'm all for that. But um, I took like Western dance, like Western swing dance. I took rock climbing. Like I took things that I wanted to actually take and actually learn about for my own life. Um, so don't be afraid to, if they like register you for classes, they can get out of them. Talk to the people, talk to upperclassmen, get in those clubs and be like, What's a good professor? Use rate my professor. Um, don't just accept what they give you because you might get a horrible class and then you'll have a horrible term. Um, and then speaking of like registering for classes, always put registration in your phone. Um, pick a time right as the term starts and go figure out like, oh, I got to register week seven on a Wednesday at noon. Um, and then uh, get your advising appointment in the books. I would always schedule my advising appointment for like week three or four because it gets really busy week five, six, seven. Um, like they don't even do like appointments. They just only do walk-ins, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, and so it's easier to set an appointment and then reschedule that appointment because I'd be like, oh, maybe I need to do this for like, if I want to talk about this class, oh, I'm just going to call them, call them real quick. Hi, can I reschedule that for week four? And then reschedule it. Um, or you just cancel it at the end if you don't even need it. They don't care. Um, and then walk-ins, at least for the College of Business, expect two to three hour wait if you're going to walk in. Um, if walk-ins start at 8 or 9 a.m., get your butt there at 7 or 8 a.m. Um, and get your name on the list because they can like turn off the list whenever you want. So it's like, oh, walk-ins from 11 to 2. They can stop walk-ins at noon if they want to. So be the first in line for walk-ins. On a more broader scale, I'm curious if this has lag. It kind of looks like it has lag. I'm so sorry. Oh, well. Um, is always say yes to just doing a bunch of stuff. I look back and every time I said yes to like a volunteer position or a job, it always helped me in something else in the long term. Um, it might look in a school and be like, yeah, I'll go help at this volunteering blood drive or I can volunteer at the baseball team or I can go on this I am soccer team for a night. Like those like little tiny blurps of memory are really, really good. Um, it's never worth just like going out one more time because going out is the same every time if no one's told you. Um, or like I could, you know, sleep. Like, yeah, you can sleep later. Like you don't really need that much sleep. You can take a 14 minute nap if you like. I've done those. Um, so just say yes to a bunch of stuff. And I think college is the best time to do that because like in high school you look back and like, I look back like I regret not joining cross country sooner or not doing lacrosse. But then when I came to college, I was like, that's not going to happen to me again. Not going to do that. 
So I'm really happy about saying yes to a lot of stuff. I feel like I don't have many regrets, um, particular with choosing activities and like meeting new people through that way. Um, go to the gym, go to Dixon. It may look really scary because anytime you walk by, you're walking by in like the middle of the day. Go one time at like 8 a.m. and you'll be like, oh, this place is empty. That's fine. There's actually no scary people in here. Even take a weight room class and learn how to take, how to do like lifting weights. Go online and be like, how do you lift a bench press? Mm -hmm. You can do that. That's totally legal. Um, but it's good to work out. I would seriously say I didn't use the gym until I had a gym buddy. And that's really good. Get a gym buddy and then you have more confidence to go. So get a gym buddy, be like, hey, I'm both scared and then go. Um, also go to the hot tub at the gym, like do a great workout and then like go in the hot tub. Also the hot tub kind of has like weird people in it, just like forewarning. Like grandpa will be there, 65 years old, 600 pounds, causing water wake. It's fine, but like it's the hot tub's just generally really nice if you don't have like a bunch of random people in there all, all the time. Um, back to like another serious thing is like don't be afraid not to be the person who doesn't go out. As much as I did have my grand old time in a frat basement or five at one night, um, they're really great memories and they're really great stories, but I'm so glad I have so many more memories that A, I remember, and B, like, will help me in other places in my life. I'm not saying, like, don't go out, um, but it's just, like, a different thing for everyone and just because, like, you don't want to or you don't like those people or you, you don't... Like, you'd rather be doing something else. Like, that's totally fine. And don't be afraid to be the person who's like, yeah, I do want to go out. I'd actually really like to have some fun doing this or doing that with you guys. Um, I don't know if I did it. I did a lot more my freshman, sophomore year and a lot less junior and senior year. Something just changes when you turn 21. You're like, this isn't as fun anymore. Um, and your body can't handle it. I, like, have one glass of wine. I'm like, hoo-hoo, no thank you. So, okay. Um, another thing would be, um, okay, so speaking of like classes, your professors know you better than you know them. I remember I won some scholarship that was, I mean, still won a scholarship, so I was stoked on that. And I was walking out of like the little ceremony area and they're like, hey, you're that girl who won that scholarship. And I was like, yes, I was. I have no idea who gave it to me, but I did. They're like, oh, the entire staff, the management staff, because I'm in college business management, um, talked and you can award that to one student and that you got that. So I was like, oh, they actually know who I am. So I bet they talk more about you than you think, but also don't overstress that just because one professor may not like you or doesn't, um, is going to haunt you or something. You'll take so many classes, so many terms, or so many students, like, You'll make friends with them. Like, I can text one professor from the college business if I need, like, some help in something. Um, but a lot of the times, like, it, they're really nice. And they're pretty helpful. I've never wanted to ask for help. I just have always been that way. Um, when I have class or homework, I'd rather just figure it out on my own. I don't know why that is, but that is true. If you lose something, don't think it's gone forever. It is a huge campus. There's a lot of people but I have lost this water bottle probably three to four times, like officially like lost it for more than like a week. Pro One time I lost it for like four months and they found it. So we can go online to a little OSU, like I lost something.com. And um, they take you to this like warehouse off like a creepy side of campus by some railroad tracks and um, they found it. And also there's a place there called the OSU store and like OSU is like trying to get rid of it. Basically a garage sale, it's a permanent garage sale. And you can find coolers and chairs and desks and textbooks and like old athlete clothes and like lamps and tables. And there was like a skiing machine there once. Go there maybe like once a year, maybe once a term and uh, just take a peek around and get really good deals on things. So that's always a fun part. Um, speaking of saving money, never buy a textbook. I remember my first term I bought a bunch of textbooks. My sister's like, you don't need them. And I'm like, I'm scared. Um, and then they didn't take one of my textbooks back because of a horrible story. So I was just pissed. So I never really bought a textbook again. Um, if you need a textbook, before you do that, look at the syllabus and see what types of assignments it needs. Because if it's like, what's your opinion on this chapter? You can go online and then type in the textbook name, type in the, the chapter that you need, and then type in the word SlideShare. SlideShare is the best website that's ever been created 
people upload their presentations about things that you need to know about. So I've had complete reports done on Harvard business cases that I did not buy because all the questions and all the answers were on that side share. And you can't really like plagiarize detect it because like it's on a presentation. So it's not you're stealing exactly what they're doing, but like if you read it, that's like reading the textbook. So it works out really well. Um, so just use, yeah, SlideShare, Google Share, Google Docs, Chegg, get someone with a Chegg account. Use it only sometimes, you know, don't be a whore with it. But um, yeah, it's wonderful. You have to don't get a textbook. Are you even gonna read it? No, you're not. You're not even gonna read it. Um, another tip, go to Dam Jam. Get field access. I only went to Dam Jam once. I wish I got field access. Um, it's just kind of something you can always talk about with other people and be like, oh, did you go to Dam Jam? Wish I went to Dam Jam this year, but it's like virtual and stupid. Um, go to Shasta. I went to Shasta last year. I was gonna be the Shasta captain of my own boat this year, but then the world fell apart. So it's really fun. Don't think it's like full of like judgment and like chaos. Like it is what you want it to be. If you're crazy in college um, and out of control, then yes, your experience will continue. But if you're responsible and just like to have fun, then it's just gonna be fine. Um, speaking of like doing just like things extra, like go the extra mile for your friends because literally it's just like sad that you make all these close friends and you're in like constant contact with them. In pandemic terms, there's a lot of touch points. Um, you see them at dinner, you can see them in class, you can see them walking to Dixon, you can go and hang out with them on the weekends, you go to parties with them, you study with them, like you see them a lot. And like those touch points just like kind of fall apart now that like everyone's so far away. Even if someone lives 10 minutes away, you still might only see them once a month. Um, and that's just kind of what happens when you get older and it's sad, but it also makes that time like so precious. So um, if you can see them, write a note on their desk, Tell them you're excited to see them in class. Like, you just don't get to see like them as much. Like, I'll probably see my friends as much as I will in college as I will for the rest of my life, like over that amount of time. So it's just sad, but um, make the effort. They're there physically and they have there for the time. So do it, buy them flowers, write them notes on their desks, walk them to work, it's worth it. Here's some things that you wouldn't know if you weren't on campus all the time. Um, don't buy Dutch. You save so much money. Um, I can't even explain probably how much money I've saved just not by like going out as much like in eating. Um, don't eat as much. Use your dining dollars efficiently. I also use my dining dollars for like the whole sophomore year. So that was, that was wicked. Those roll over. Um, yeah, just don't buy Dutch as much as you need. If it's a $3 drink and you buy this five times a week, like you can do better things with your money. Um, Sabelli's is a pizza place on 9th Street. It is a far amount away, but there's really good people there. I think it's like employee, locally owned. Um, one time my boyfriend was, he just came back from a brotherhood and I picked him up and he was like, let's go get pizza. And we drove up and they were like just about to close and he walked in there and kind of made a fool of himself, but they had three leftover slices of pizza and they just gave them to us for free. So support Sabelli's, big fan great pizza, great toppings. Make sure you tip well, because then they'll put lots of toppings on it. Um, speaking of over on 9th Street, go take classes at LBCC. It's really easy to get registered. It probably took me one or two phone calls to get classes over there. The classes were easier, um, smaller, and saved you a lot of money. It's worth like the little extra step to do that. If you don't have a car, it's like a 20 minute walk. Luckily I had a good friend who lived near me and he drove um, to class. So save money, do it. Um, speaking of saving money, apply for scholarships. When I was a freshman, scholarship program was super difficult to navigate. You had to like apply through FAFSA. It was basically impossible. They revamped it like two years ago. It's super easy to make an account. You find scholarships that apply to you. You can type in the word women, you can type in the word engineering, type in the word ecology, and everything will pop up that you need. Um, so you can get scholarships really easily. The system's like really nice. And if you really need more money, I suggest, and another thing that more scholarships will apply to you if you have an on-campus job, is get an on-campus job. I had three while working at Oregon State. I worked for a food to you service for like a few weeks. It was like nothing. It's basically the dining halls. And then I worked for Safe Ride and I work as a tutor. I work as a tutor, mentor, facilitator, everything at um, student athletes. So the dorm, it's just the dorm food was like 
short term, but I still like did it and got like all the registration to be on campus employee. Um, safe ride tips. If someone orders a safe ride and you cancel it and then apply for another one and try to get a shorter time, we will purposely make it longer. When I was, okay, also when I left, it was still like human programmed. Like they were trying to get some like AI system to like map it for you. Maybe they did that. Um, I'm not sure. I also know they cut their hours and then like they reduced their service time because like money or something. Um, but when I worked there, I would work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 6 to 10.30. Nightmarish. And then sometimes I'd have to pull a Sunday, like they call them Sunday sleepies, and it would be at 10.30 to 2 a.m. And like the respect to everyone in Safe Ride, like anytime I drive, Safe Ride drives by, I'd ride, Safe Ride drives by, I say, Safe Ride! Just like out of respect for them because I know how difficult that job is. Um, and that's another thing, just getting on campus job. You respect your community more, you respect more people around you. Any type of service job like that will do that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and then I'm a tutor now. So I just keep applying for jobs. They pop up all the time, especially in the summer. Like right now, if you're like in transition of years or coming to Oregon State, like this is when jobs like all apply because people like me are graduating. Um, and so they're always hiring. They're always hiring people. So you just gotta keep your eye out for that. And they have a lot of different types of jobs. They're not all service and coffee jobs. There's a lot of assistants. There's a lot of videographers and you know lab technicians and stuff like that. So you just gotta keep your eye out for that. Um, Another thing with just like time, because you're gonna be so busy doing all your clubs, Greek life, your classes, your job, um, you won't have to see people you don't like. Unless you're still connected in some type of organization with them, don't worry about it. Because once they disappear, they will literally disappear. Like social media is, like makes us think we're all so much more connected. You're just seeing what people want you to see. But if you don't want to see them anymore, like, they won't cross your path. It's, it's beautiful. Be like, oh, we were best friends this year. And then because that one thing ended, a relationship, a class, a job, a club, like, boom, they're gone. Um, unless you have, like, okay, then this is just another, like, blurb of thought. I always have, like, one person in my life who I just keep seeing over and over again. I can't remember her name, but I saw her, like, in a club and then, like, in sorority stuff. And then I'd see her, like, at work. I can't remember her name is. It was an odd name. It was a nice name, but it was an odd name. Um, but anyways, yeah, don't worry about it. Those people will vanish. Unlike high school, when you kept just seeing them over and over again. Nah, nah, nah. We're over that. We over it. Um, other things about Corvallis. Go to Mary's Peak and watch the sunrise one time. Fall term is a great time to, time to do it. You can do it winter term. It's freezing. There's probably snow. Um, but me and one of my best friends, Ralph... Madison, we went up there and I cherish that like one day we did that and I wish we did it more and we were always like oh we'll do it next term we'll do it next term and you just gotta do it at least once go to the beach tell your friends be like we're getting the car we're going to the beach it takes 45 minutes to drive there you can hang out there for an hour hour and a half try and go when it's sunny um park walk around come back um another if you need like a hike if you're feeling like hikey there's not many hikes in Corvallis unfortunately so there's a great hike called uh, McDowell Creek Falls. I believe it's about 45 minutes away, maybe an hour um, east of Corvallis. You gotta drive back over I-5. Um, it's in the Lebanon-ish zone, but it's really, it's like maybe one or maybe it's like two or three miles. Kind of steep in some spots, but you can walk on the waterfall. It just gets you into some trees. It kind of gets you out of the city, gets you some quiet. Um, I've been there multiple times with multiple different people and um, every time everyone always loves it. So if you, need, if you need a little bit more nature, go that way. And then speaking of like your spot, I'm saying speaking of a lot, so sorry, I'm speaking of course, this is a podcast, um, is find your spot on campus that you know you'll do homework or classwork or whatever um, really well at. A lot of people are like, you have to go to the library and you have to get a silent room. I'm more of a person that I work well when I'm in a social stimulating space and then I turn myself off because if I go to the library and it's dead silent like that makes me kind of like why is it quiet uh, why am I quiet so I worked really well in like sorority we had like a study room so I liked being in there and like people would come in and out and people would like talk and work on stuff but I liked like putting in my headphones and like choosing to be in the zone and then when I wanted some socialization I could pop back in and say hi to people um which man that was really fun but yeah, find your spot, find your study sesh. Maybe it is 
like on your couch try not to make it in your bed try to make your bed like your bed space where like you can just chill go on your phone watch youtube instagram scroll city um and like don't try not to eat in your bed i didn't have this problem because living in the sorority we had our beds all up in the same uh porch so you couldn't be on your laptop there which is really good so that would be like a safe, like relaxing space. But like even in the dorms, like don't eat in your bed. Don't do homework in your bed. Make your bed like your relaxing space. Um, so yeah, okay. And then these are just random tips, just like final tips. You're gonna be at Oregon State. Um, the best time to get front row at Oregon State Beaver game is 90 minutes before. So you don't need to go when gates open. Um, but my favorite spot would be obviously front row, front row or don't go. Gotta have my sign, my chainsaw, my flag, you know, the whole thing. Um, and then don't be on the 50 because the 50 is like right where all like there's a bunch of like sound equipment and stuff and like yeah you're on the 50 yard line but like who cares so I would go between like the 35 and the 40 ish try to shoot for like the 35 on the left side and I say left side because usually that would be like second it's like the whatever you're on one half of the game so you'll see touchdowns like touch if there are touchdowns, but you'll see them actually happen in front of you, not like on the other side, which like, yeah, if you're in the halfway point, like you can see half and half, but whatever, pick which, which side of the game you think they're going to win at. I like the left side because uh, it's closer to the, uh, the big board too. And then um, the other thing about, uh, oh, and the best, the, the reason why is that it's also where the defensive bench is. And I like the defense. It's really cool when they get a stop and they like run up on the bench and like if they like get like a fumble or like an interception or anything like that, um, the boys will like run up and like scream at you and you're like right there and it's like, yeah. So that's the best spot. Get there like 90 minutes before. Yeah, it's a long time, but um, front row don't go. That's easy, 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 easy. The best spot to tailgate is right by the IM fields, kind of in between the basketball um, gym and the IM fields, like right on 26, I think. Um, it's not like too many people walking around, but there's enough where like, if you wanna go play catch or something, you have the space to do that. Um, yeah, you have to pay to park, but like, obviously you're not paying because you're gonna walk there and hopefully meet like your family or other alumni there. Um, but yeah, tailgating is super fun. Spend the whole tailgate, the, spend the whole day tailgating. Don't just like, oh, the game's at 12. Like, eh, stop tailgating at eight, nine. Like, just hang out with people, play some cornhole. I'm really looking forward to that in the fall. Um, and then, okay, these other random tips. If you're going to the gym, back to Dixon, and you want to park, there's never parking. There's never parking on campus. Never expect there to be parking. Um, but you can sometimes find spots behind the ROTC, um, I think they're the Navy. I think it's like the Navy people. Um, over there, there's a few parking spots. Don't park in the commander spot. You might get towed. But if it's like late night and you're like going to the gym at like nine or eight, um, you can probably get away with parking back there and then like kind of sneak back and walk towards Dixon. And that also works for game days or like basketball games or baseball games if you park there early enough. Um, that's a good spot. And then last little tip, it's really simple that you can rename your classes on Canvas. Um, so like when you click on Canvas, there's like the name will be like WR underscore 222 underscores SP2020 English composition. Blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of words. And like, who wants that? So you can go into your Canvas and click on that name and rename it. So you can type, just type the word writing. And then you can type in the other one like sus, like for sustainability. Or you can type in 413 if you know it more by the number. But my stigma with that is make sure whatever name you type it in it is appropriate. Uh, one time I typed in the word hell uh, because my class was really, really hard. So, and then I replied to a professor once like in a Canvas email and then the subject um, had the word hell in it. So a little bit of blurb there, but that's okay. So these are my tips with uh, being a student at Oregon State. Some things that are easy, some things that are good, some things that are bad. Um, you have a great time. It's a great school. 10 out of 10 would go back, but too busy being big lady, being boss lady. Go start my job soon. Um, so thanks for listening to this podcast. I'll probably keep it going. This was my minimum of five for my leadership class. Thank you for listening. I'll probably do some more over my lifetime. Maybe I'll get better at it. Maybe I won't, but um, this was fun. I'm glad I was able to do it. And go Beeves.